Hey guys, welcome to the other 167 here. I am Brandon and this is the Father, Son and Holy Spirit series. Now, the, we have reached part 11 and to most of you who are new to this uh, series, it's very important that you have followed up with the previous parts so that we can all be on the same page. Now, this is a very exciting subject for a lot of us because it's very vital and it's very exciting rather to know who the God is that we worship. When we read the Bible, we look at words like Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It almost seems like it's so, it's so confusing to understanding how can there be three people or persons inside the Godhead. And actually, quite frankly speaking, the Bible is the Bible is very silent about such terminology. It never uses the word persons or separate persons or individuals for God. God is absolutely one master and king. He is the God of gods in parental relationship. He is our father, uh, you know, in his spiritual essence and being he is a spirit. So he is holy, right? So the Holy Spirit is a different title for the father, for our heavenly father, because that's how he dwells. He dwells, he exists and he moves about, um, you know, as a spirit. God is a spirit, John 4, 24. The object of this uh, lesson of these parts is to understand who God is and how do we really understand Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So in the previous parts we've covered uh, uh, you know different subjects like who is the Word of God and you know and you know many other things who is the Son who is so in this part this is part 11 we will be uh, learning who is the Father you know it's very important to know who is the Father like you know the Lord's Prayer our Father, hallowed be thy name. But we've never paid heed to what's the name of our name of our Heavenly Father. Who is really our Father? So we read in the Bible, you know, Jesus constantly points us to the Father, to the Father. Well, that's God, right? But who what's his, who he is and what's what is his name? If you have watched the previous videos, uh, it'll be much easier to understand uh, who the Father is because I have been very vocal uh, through scripture that um, the one who has been revealed in the New Testament as our Savior is in fact our Heavenly Father. So who is the Father? Well, the Father is Jesus Himself. You see, for God to reveal Himself, He had to come as a man of time. You know, to accomplish the cross, He had to, uh, you know, keep His uh, identity and His divinity, uh, you know, shrouded with some sort of mystery or, or some truth that cannot be you know, received uh, by the normal person, but by the average person, all, all those truths and mysteries are revealed uh, through faith, you know, and God has to open one's eyes, you know, so uh, the Jesus of the New Testament is our Heavenly Father of the Old Testament, you know, his flesh, his humanity is not eternal, his humanity is not permanent or rather has not always been there but his spirit is our heavenly father his spirit by according to jesus according to his spirit is our heavenly father and jesus according to his flesh is the son of god or god participating in humanity for our sake so who is our father well for the first point is our creator and father became our redeemer or the son of god you know so why do we say our Father is our Redeemer? Because if you've, got, if you've watched the previous parts, um, you know, God had to be both flesh, spirit, man, God, you know, Lord, servant, you know, all of these things. So uh, in the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 63, verse 16, it says, Doubtless thou, thou art our Father, though Abraham be ignorant of us, and Israel acknowledges not. Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer, thy name is from everlasting. So, our Father is also our Redeemer. So, in the New Testament, who else is our Redeemer? Jesus is our Redeemer. He's also our Father manifested in the flesh. You know, if you go, if you go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, uh, verse 4 onwards, um, it says, He is the rock. Now, this is... Uh, um, Moses describing our Heavenly Father or the God of, of Israel. He is the rock, his work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. Uh, and then verse uh, 6, do, do you thus requite, requite the, the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that had bought thee, had, had he not made thee and established thee? So uh, Israel acknowledged 
their god as their father and and he was their rock you know uh, the, the rock or rather a rock as a title for god is is a very special title and we see that we see the same language pointing to jesus under the new testament in uh, in the book of uh, first corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 uh, it says and and they all drank the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was christ so here is a clear emphasis that the rock of the old testament who was the father of israel is the very christ of the new testament so you see father son holy spirit you know these are separate titles or roles or offices that god takes to bring us salvation you see i can i can have so many titles i can be a musician a, a son a father a cook you know uh, an author if if i'm one then you know you know all of these titles but all those titles point point to brandon and brandon is one absolute individual so in the book of zechariah uh, chapter 12 verse 10 it says uh, you know uh, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced now god the father is speaking over here and he is making a declaration that they shall look upon him who the father whom they have pierced now who was pierced in the new testament it was jesus who was pierced because jesus is the revelation of our heavenly father you know and then obviously isaiah 96 the famous passage that points to jesus as our heavenly father it, uh, you know isaiah refers to him as the everlasting father you know so we have just one father in heaven and he is our heavenly father his his eternal name is jesus you know jesus says i have come in my father's name so the name of jesus is actually the name of our heavenly father which means yehoshua or yeshua uh, yahweh has become our salvation do not just look at his humanity and think of him as being one separate person from two others you know god cannot be separate persons god cannot be this this uh, cannot be this sort of council or this group or contraction of persons inside it god is absolutely one and when we go to heaven we are going to see one on the throne with one face one name and that is jesus himself point number 2 is from the beginning god the father wanted a father and son relationship now this is a very important point i want you to take this point you know home uh, god wanted a father and son relationship with his children So he became a son himself to show us how we as children of God must overcome this world. On judgment day, no one can question can question God of not knowing what it's like to be human because he's been in our place. He has seen it all, tasted it all, felt rejection and betrayal. So he, that is why the son of God, that is why this title son of God, that is why our heavenly father took this role as the son of God so that he could taste that he could overcome you know sin not because he was sinful but he could overcome the temptations of sin so that we through his life can lead a perfect life the way he wants from us you know he became a son himself in time and he uh, and no one can judge him by the way you know when you go to heaven and if you want to judge god for not knowing what it's like to be human he's going to point to calvary's cross he's going to say like you know he's going to be like you know i have been there i have been in your shoes so to speak so that is who our heavenly father is our heavenly father is the jesus of the new testament so i hope this series is helping you and do reach out do reach out to Caleb uh, Paul who runs this channel you know if you want if you have any questions if you would like to email me also directly please do so god bless you and have a wonderful week ahead